Hi guys, this is Ray over at Cigar Climatology. Uh, what I wanted to demonstrate a little bit today is um, air exchange. How air exchange affects the uh, life inside your cooler. Um, I spend a lot of time working on the ability to intentionally dehydrate the interior of my cooler in my, my humidor and uh, what I'm going to do is give you a demonstration as to why. First I want to give you a brief explanation as to what's going on here at the top of, um, of one of my test wine cooler humidors. <clears throat> First and foremost it's probably confusing because I control this wine cooler from the exterior not the interior. I don't know if you can actually see inside the glass but there's actually a controller in here it's just not lit up. I do that for a purpose because it makes it a lot easier for me to test things in this particular humidor with uh, with the ability to control it from the outside. It means I can reprogram my controller or I can run certain operations uh, through what I call a simulator. Um, this is a relatively simple simulator built with one of my controllers and you can see on this side there are four switches. The four switches have either an on or an auto position which means that if I want to force something to happen inside the wine cooler, <coughs> inside the, uh, the humidor, and pardon me I've been sick, uh, the humidor then what I can do is I can force this situation by, by working an appliance. And um, if I wanted to give you a quick demonstration of that, uh, let's take a real qu quick look at the RH in this particular cooler. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you. Okay, so the RH is 59.9 and the temperature is 69.9. And how we know that is B1, this is common, uh, common uh, sensor language for the controls community shows 69.9, that's the temperature inside the, the humidor currently, and 59.9. Now, just to show you, if I hit set here real quick, uh, the set point on this particular humidor is at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if I hit set again, the uh, current RH setting is 60.2, so you can see for the most part, and, and I haven't been tinkering with this today, but it will range some just depending upon what the environment's doing. Um, so just for kicks real quick what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the, the humidifier on real fast and we'll see what it does to the RH. Well you can see that it's already moving it so I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off. Okay so in the very short time that it's been on what I've done is I've pumped some water into the system which has now forced the system to wish to dehydrate and that's the reason why the little number four here is on. Now in this particular instance um, right before I turned the video on the the cooler previously dehydrated so the cooling coil is already cold and the refrigeration is essentially locked out for a couple of minutes. So I'm, I'm not really going to worry about that right this second but it, it what I wanted to do is give you an idea why I use uh, in this particular instance, the the, uh, the the controller with a manual override or the simulator. Um, just so that we can get on with the discussion of why I'm actually making the video, we're going to zoom out here a little bit, and we're going to take a look over here at this controller. Now, this controller is actually looking at a sensor here that's up, that's above the wine cooler humidor and you can see that it's 81.9 degrees in here and it's also 52 RH okay so if we come back to the cooler just for a moment if we come back to the actual humidor um, I can hear it you probably can't but the, uh, the the dehumidification cycle has started inside the wine cooler because remember I pumped some water in it a minute ago and you can see now at this point in time that um, the cooler is now dehydrating back down to where it's supposed to be. So um, this again is is a demonstration of the dehumidification cycle, but it's uh, it's it, it was forced. It's it's not really natural, 
and it really wasn't what I was designed, uh, what the video is about. <clears throat> so pardon my mumbling. Anyway, back here, like I said, it's about 82 degrees in here, and it's about 50 RH. Now, okay, so what's going to happen to this cooler if I open the door? And you're probably thinking, well, it's 82, so maybe the temperature will go up a little bit. And uh, because it's 50 RH, well, more than likely it's a little drier out there. Well, that's really not the case, because remember, this is a discussion, or this is the realm of relative humidity. And in some ways, we have to look at absolute humidity, or how much water is actually in the atmosphere or in the space at any one given time. So what you think might happen and what will actually happen could be different things depending upon what the temperature is, the actual temperature, and what the actual water content is um, inside the atmosphere at any one given time. Now again, the dehumidification cycle just ran on this cooler a minute ago, so again, this cooler will be locked out for about three minutes, but for giggles, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to open the door. I'm going to zoom you back in so that you can uh, see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and open the door on the cooler, and you're going to get an idea about what happens with an air exchange. Uh, so here we go. So uh, the cooler door is now open. And what I really want you to do is get an idea on how rapidly the air exchanges inside, inside your cooler w when you open it. Now, remember, it's 50 RH out here. And what is it doing to the insides of my cooler? Well, it's already 70 RH inside my cooler. Okay, or close to. So we're going to go ahead and close it, and you can see that the temperature has gone up as well. So we haven't turned the cooler off, we've just let it do its own thing as if we were going to go in there and grab a box of cigars. Um, and, and that's what 30 seconds or 40 seconds or a minute worth of opening has done to the inside environment of your, of your humidor. Now if you live in a warm, humid environment, you can see why um, your storage can go awry in a hurry just when in fact you think that well you know it's perfect and it's you know net ambient hot but I've got this refrigerator on the inside but uh, the RH is still less uh, because that's what my exterior hygrometer is telling me etc etc um, so it's important to understand that you, you really have to know um, what your ambient, what your ambient is, and understand that your ambient, just because it's reflecting a lower relative humidity than what you are currently storing at, does not mean that there's actually less water in the environment. And it, it, and so that was a demonstration of what an air exchange actually does to the inside, uh, to the inside of your your humidor. <clears throat> now this cooler has gone ahead and reset itself. Um, so it's currently operating again. Now you can see the little number four down here went away because it's currently dehydrating and it doesn't really need to dehydrate anymore since it's now working on a cooling cycle. The cooling cycle is going to force dehydration so in fact where I started with an environment that was adjusted to be a net high RH environment, I'm actually in a net low RH environment now because the, the humidor is working on correcting the temperature problem, not just the humidity problem. So with the lower temperature or with refrigeration will come dehydration. So the wine cooler is, is currently adding water back into it to try and keep the balance between running the refrigeration and keeping the RH from actually going too low. Now what's going to happen is because th this is actually a traumatic event for a humidor, believe it or not, uh, what it's going to do is it actually might bounce uh, in between some of these set points for a few minutes or a couple of cycles. And that's just the way they work. Um, there's, there's nothing that you can do at this point in time from actually having the humidor overshoot its, its set point positions. The whole idea, though, is not only short-term correction time, but long-term stability. So. I've set these. Uh, I've set my projects up so that even if they do bounce off a set point once or twice, they get forced back down into the channel of where they need to be 
as far as stability is concerned. <clears throat> We're now down to 69.9, so you can see that even though we've let warm air into it, for all intents and purposes, it's been adjusted. The coolers are designed, or at least the way I program them, I don't program them to run right at a razor's edge, because otherwise the systems would really be attempting to run all the time. And my experience says that this is just, that's, that's not a really good way to approach it. I can actually make these things run far more precise, but what happens in the variance in temperatures that I get, the, ultimately the, the project might not work as well. So, and, and as you probably know, 82 uh, between the two temperatures, the two thermometers I have in here, this one says 84, this one says 82. Um, this is due to the fact that this is stuck between some electronics and it's detecting two degrees higher. Okay, the, the, the real beauty in this is the fact that I can actually have an 82 degree ambient and have absolutely no trepidation about how my cigars are stored. So, while I've been blathering on, you've probably been watching this, and I have not, but look, look pretty much at where we've ended up. I'm now at 69.6 .6 after opening to the outside world and at 59.8. Um, so for all intents and purposes, I'm right back to where I was before. I think I started right at 70 and 60 because the, the cooler had not been opened and it was very stable. Um, but that's the demonstration. That's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how much water can enter your humidor in very, very sh a short period of time depending upon your ambient and how a properly controlled uh, precision wine cooler humidor will handle that situation. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, of course, you know where to find me, uh, either on FOH or uh, uh, cigarclimatology uh, at gmail.com. Thanks again.